Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, WCE Winning Cures Everything, number 218-218. It is the Tuesday, July 17th edition of the show. We got a lot to discuss today, but first off, as always, today's show is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. They are the best online sports book, period. Go check them out, MyBookie.ag. You can sign up with promo code WCE50. That's WCE50. It is a 50% deposit bonus. So you put in 100 bucks, they're going to give you 50 bucks for free. On top of that, they got the best layout. Go check it out. MyBookie.ag, promo code WCE50, WCE50. Along with that, the show is brought to you by our website, winningcureseverything.com. We got news, we got stats, we got different stories and whatnot. We'll put up all sorts of stuff. Our SEC previews are coming up next week. Go check those things out. Uh, the podcast is always posted there. Different stories, different uh, different YouTube videos and whatnot. You know the deal. Go check it out. Uh, we are also on YouTube. We are on iTunes. We are on Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, all your favorite podcast apps. Go to YouTube. Subscribe. It's youtube.com slash winning cures everything. With that, we're going to go on and jump and do some stories. All right, normally how this goes, we do three stories, and it's the three biggest stories of the week. However, we are in the uh, the dog days of summer. There's not a whole lot going on. Uh, there's the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, all that good stuff. And we'll get to all that in the blurbs. Uh, that's going to be a new segment that we'll do whenever we do not have three big stories. We're just going to do a rapid fire of, of the latest stuff that comes out. But there was a really interesting story that came out on Yahoo Sports. Pat Forty wrote it. Uh, he's got a piece up on an interview he did with Josh Rosen. We're going to discuss this for a little while now. Um, it, it, Chris, you hadn't seen this yet, have you? Haven't at all. You you called me about it, talked to me about it this uh, morning, and um, I was busy working. And I said, let's let's treat me like the listeners that might not know it, and just give me give me the story, the the summed up version. All right, so these are basically the highlights of it. Uh, he was given a paper written by the former UCLA quarterback along with two other people, and the working title for it is The Modernization of Collegiate Athletics as an Incentive for Graduation. Now, Rosen told Forty, I'm not against the NCAA. I do strongly believe in the student-athlete experience, and I don't think the free market is the way to go. I also don't want a system that was created in the 1950s to stay the way it was. I want it to be more like the iPhone, constantly updating to stay current with the times. I want this idea to get people talking. I want this to sort of be the WD-40 that unlocks the stuck gears of how to compensate student-athletes. I like the premise, right? So, Forty says in his article, uh, Basically, Rosen and company envision athletes being able to profit within the NCAA's established amateurism philosophy. Instead of rallying against it, they want to work with it. Under this plan, athletes can profit from various revenue opportunities that arise during their college careers after they graduate. That means no diploma, no money. So here's the highlights from the document. I'll go on and give you these, and then we can discuss. Amateurism remains changed, or remains unchanged. Excuse me. There was a typo there. (laughs) Uh, Independent third-party licenses, names, and likeness. Uh, No contact between brands and student-athletes. Student athlete receives money only upon graduation. The NCAA gains additional revenue stream with no additional cost or infrastructure. And NCAA member institutions will increase licensing revenue through reopen channels such as video games and other group license opportunities created or bolstered by the program. For example, like uh, licensees will have to negotiate licenses with NCAA member institutions to use their rights in conjunction with such licensees group license with respect to student athletes, etc., I love the idea. It, it Now, it's not going to do away with everything. You're still going to have the black market stuff that goes on. Well, especially for college basketball. This doesn't help college basketball one bit. Because those guys are not close to diplomas. In football, you can graduate, get a diploma in three years. Yes. You have to stay three years anyway. So in football, in baseball, in all these others, it, it helps, right? In basketball, this will not help one bit. No. However, in the plan, it does not say anything about, like, when you graduate, right? Like, the money will still be around for you if you graduate. There's no timetable so on it. Th- all right, that's the other question. We're putting 
large sums of money in the hands of people who have kind of been shown they can't be trusted. What happens to the million dollars that somebody pays for Tua Tongalova to be their spokesman or whatever to this escrow account that goes to him, but he doesn't graduate. He leaves as a junior. And, okay, what happens to that money? That's a good question. Because I'm not okay with that going to the NCAA. I, I wish I could answer that question. I haven't read through. There's 36 pages in this document. Now, what I would do, this is literally a guy that just heard about this, just learned about it. If if I'm going to kind of throw things at the wall and see if they stick kind of deal, my thought would be you've got five years from the time you leave college to graduate. Okay? Okay. So if you want to come back over the summers and get your degree so you get this money, great. If after five years you don't graduate, then you can name a charity that the the money be donated to in your name. I like that idea. I'm okay with that. I, I think that'd be fine. Because the I don't know thing. I don't know what that hurts, and there's no reason the NCAA already makes gazillions of dollars off these players. Yeah. They don't need to keep this extra money that would be paid for by extra advertisers. Well, I think if if you're the NCAA, this makes it a little more likely that you would be interested in doing it, right? Well, the NCAA so, can draw interest off the money. So if you're in college for a minimum of three years to get a degree and and you're paid, quote unquote, by this other company and it sits in escrow, the reason you you pay, you know, your insurance in escrow to your house is the the banks that are doing that are banking that money. They're they're drawing interest off of your money and then yeah. paying your insurance. Um, it, it would be an opportunity for the the NCAA to make money that way, but the money is not theirs. The principal money paid is not theirs. The they've got several different revenue sports or, or that they can do. Put that money into scholarship pools. Now they way, they do I'm, bring I'm, that up. I'm on, I'm I'm okay with That's, that too. Here here's the breakdown for okay. their different revenue splits, right? So they've got individual deals, revenue split number one, and revenue split number two. Revenue split number one is fifty percent of that money goes to the player pool. It doesn't go okay. to an individual player, just the player pool. Okay. Then you've got twenty five percent that goes to the clearinghouse. The NCAA gets fifteen percent, and then ten percent to a general scholarship fund. That's revenue split one. Revenue split two is 25% to the player pool, 25% to the individual player, 25% to the general scholarship fund, 15% to the NCAA, 10% to the clearinghouse. I tend to like that one a little more. Then you've got the individual deals, right? The individual deal is 50% goes to the individual player. And then 10% goes to the player pool, 25% to the clearinghouse, 10% 10% to the NCAA, and then 5% to the General Scholarship Fund. So everybody is getting a piece of the pie. And it makes sense that way when you graduate, you can get the money. This makes sense for the people that are not going to the NFL early, that are not going, you know, that are not going to be major league draft picks, you know, first round, all that kind of mess. I love the, the when, premise of it because there's, there's several on, different... Depending on how much of the individual money that you're going to get, you might decide, I'm going to come back to college another year. Yeah. I mean, if you're a four-string four string draft pick, third-string draft pick, third-string, third-round draft pick, that's still, <laughs> that's still a decent pick. Those guys are yeah. going to play. They're going to get meaningful playing time in the NFL. But you could make another million dollars, 800000 200000 I don't know what coming back to college for another year, it's less than what you could make in the NFL if you make it, but it's there's no gamble. Like, you just have to stay another year, and the yeah. only thing you're hurting is, do you get hurt and then maybe not get drafted? Now, the cool thing is the, the student-athlete participation. You don't have to participate in this if you don't want to. That's right. Which, it's a little bit crazy not to. I, I doubt there would be very many people that would do that, but... Um, from that, there's also the the different options as far as local advertising. There's going to be a different split, uh, and I have not read through and found all that out yet. But you, you can find all this on Yahoo Sports. Um, on this, local advertising, regional advertising, and national advertising all have different ways that they go about licensing players, paying, all that good stuff. So 
with this setup, it's close to an Olympic model. Yep. Close because collegiate athletes then could be used in Nike commercials and Wheaties commercials, whatever, and whatever. I mean, yeah, just. like it's so. So when somebody like Johnny Manziel wins the Heisman as a redshirt freshman, or Lamar Jackson as yep. a, a what was he a sophomore? Sure. No, yeah. So at that point, you can do just about anything. Yep. Like you can you can be used Tim T, but when you're a freshman and you know that your probably skills don't equate to the NFL to where you know you're not only going to start for four years, but you're going to be a major contributor and a face of a program for four yeah. years, you have an opportunity to capitalize on that for four years. Yes. Yes. Tebow for sure. Tebow would have had a cult following and would have I mean, this is this is a decade too late. Yeah, for guys oh, like him. Well, it, Jalen Hurts at Alabama. Yep. Like he may not start this year, but the last two years he did. He was a true freshman <clears throat> leading Alabama to a twenty-six and two record. Yeah, you know, it, that's the way it goes. Tua Tonga Valoa, it would work great for this year, right? He's going to be so a massive if he if he wins the starting job. Let's 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 change let's change gears on this same subject for a minute, but but move on to the person. That that is the face of this right now. I said before the whole draft thing started, if I had to take one quarterback, it was going to either be Josh Rosen or Lamar yep. Jackson. Yeah, this is the reason why I'm okay with Rosen and his picks and or his um, Jay Cutler demeanor that some people criticized him for. This guy is smart. This guy oh, has yeah, a head on his much. shoulders. He is a problem solver, and all I want in life is to surround myself with problem solvers. Being a guy that has been in management most of my life and then um, owning my own business now, I literally could care less about your abilities in so many things if you can solve problems yourself. You can think through things logically and intelligently and, and find solutions for them because that's all life is. It's, it's just one big math problem. And, and if you do enough math problems and you, and you do them well enough, you, you get to retire. You get to survive. You get to move on um, to the next stage of life. And I think great quarterbacks are your best problem solvers. I don't think it's a, a coincidence that Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and Eli and, and you know, Philip Rivers, these guys, that – that have succeeded and succeeded for so long without any unbelievable physical attribute or character. Yeah. They don't have Ben Roethlisberger's size and monster arm or Michael Vick's just crazy speed and power arm. They did it with their brains. There are 30 quarterbacks that went undrafted that had better arms and better tools than all of those guys. Yeah. But every one of them but one, Drew Brees you could throw in there, every one of them but one have a Super Bowl ring. True. And 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 all of them have played way longer than probably expected. I think it's just between the ears. I think it's the brains. And uh, I agree with you. And and I I think things like that, you can't coach, you can't teach, and any flaws that they have in their game that you want to quote unquote coach out, you're going to coach them out of those guys. You're not yeah. going to coach them out of Roethlisberger. He's never going to. No amount of coaching is going to make him not hold the ball longer. That's he, true. He because he, he, he just doesn't have it between the ears like those guys do. Yeah, and and so when we're talking about why teams draft players, I w I think that's the most foolproof thing. Is if there's no formula to say is this guy going to be great or is this guy going to be great, I want to know what the man is between the ears, just because that I as his coach can't control. Agreed. The the two guys that he worked with are are also incredibly smart. Oh, well, no doubt. No, uh, there's no, one's, there's no despite. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, to come but, up with this plan and to be able to to articulate. And they the way went. They, do. they went very very detailed on this. Uh, the group licensing products that they discussed. If you haven't thought up already while you're listening to this, all the different ways that players could make money. Uh, this is stuff that the NCAA makes money off of that players get nothing, nothing from. Correct. Video games and mobile games. So that would be a split one that we talked about. Uh, everything else will be split too. That's trading cards yep. that you can do. Jersey sales, calendars, digital goods on a case-by-case -case basis, and fat heads or cutouts. Now, I don't know what digital goods would be. Um, 
I have no idea. I'm going to bet, like, Facebook backgrounds or wall backgrounds that you can purchase for your phone and stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess that would make sense. That would make sense. But, yeah, something like that, um, you know, the terms and conditions, of course, will vary greatly on these. But the licenses, I mean, it opens up, it opens up a lot for the NCAA and for the schools to be able to, to profit off of these. Because the video game in and of itself... I just NCAA wonder, 14 is, was is this group of people just so close-minded and so set in their ways that they're they're just not budging? They're on this hill, and they're dying on this hill. We're not paying players. We're not putting it in escrow to pay them when they graduate. We're not doing any of this. And if they do choose to do it, there's no doubt in my mind they're going to want to say, we keep the money if you don't graduate. There's, yeah. there's no doubt that's going to be a sticking point for them because they want to find a way, how do we get a bigger piece of the pie? I, yeah. I will tell you this. I think that they could make more money doing I would, it this way. I would, oh, or, they can't make more money than free labor, Gary. Agreed. They, that's not possible. Agreed. But adding the game, if, so they get to sell a game and they get a percentage of that game. But then game, they also get all this other that, stuff with it, right? They already so, have all this other I understand stuff. They already got, sell fatheads. They already do all this stuff. I'm with you. I'm with the you. only thing they can't do right now is the video game. So the well, no, no, no. You can't sell like like you can't sell like current players, fat head or cut out. No, or but the name sell, on the but jersey. But they sell the jersey. But they sell with the, the jersey number. with the number. That's yeah, right. Yeah, because it's, it's just a number. It's the same. It's all the same, Gary. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. They've got four different tiers on this. So I already talked about this, but the premier tier. The minimum deal value is two hundred thousand for an academic year and one hundred fifty thousand for just one season. Uh, that's a national territory, and it is it, it it's exclusive, right? Okay. Tier one is also national with full marketing materials, exclusive to uh, exclusive with respect to car, uh, product class. That's seventy five thousand for an academic year, fifty thousand for a season, and that's minimum deal value. Territory two is regional or conference. So every state in which the PSA's conference has a member school. Okay. Uh, that's limited marketing, uh, marketing materials, et cetera. Uh, that's 20000 bucks for the academic year, 10000 for a season. I'm interested and then, in this one. And then you've got tier three, which is your state. Being a business owner. And that is uh, 5000 bucks for the academic year, oh. 2500 for a season. And oh. that's minimum. Oh, if I could have... If if I could go back in time and have Deuce McAllister well, it, for, uh, for the North Mississippi business uh, agreed. that I ran for five thousand dollars, yeah, I'd pay well, it, for an I'd academic pay it, year. I'd pay it a hundred times. Uh, and on top of that, local state. So within fifty miles of PSA's institution, this is this may be what you're on. Yeah, uh, two thousand bucks for academic year, one thousand for a season. Give me just give me give me Derek Rose but, in the Memphis area. But that's here's what I'm saying. Each player is going to be different. It's going That's to vary. Right. That's right. You're probably not going to get Rose. You're not for going that. to get Rose for that cheap. And so, and he'll be. You get Joey Dorsey for that. Exactly. But <laughs> that's the thing is that the clearinghouse serves as the licensee or licensor, right? The, the the agent between them. Okay. That way, the student athlete never has to try and negotiate. You don't have to worry about agents. You don't have to worry about all that. All of it's done through them. You just make money. And so, as a student athlete, you're good to go. Derrick Rose would have never seen this money. Would have never seen that money. <laughs> no, you're right. you're right. But he's fine. He was the number one pick in the draft. That's right. That's right. So, all right. I uh, I personally like the idea. I think it's great. No, you, and you and I have been arguing for this. We're, we're on the same page. These guys have to be compensated somehow. Well, if the NCAA doesn't do something... They will lose a court case eventually. Eventually. Eventually, and, we will find they, a judge. And this whole thing will blow right. up. Eventually, there will be a judge that will step up and say, no, sir, you don't get free labor. You want to call them student athletes? That's fine. You don't get to profit billions. Exactly. These, there is then, a problem there. You, you need to become a, um, I was thinking of the corporate term for it, but whatever a nonprofit is. The, well, and, and they yeah. claim to be a nonprofit, but, you but can't they're claim profiting. to be a can't be a, can't be a nonprofit and make billions. Exactly, because they, you just spend it on stupid stuff like waterfalls. Yeah. All right, we'll uh, we'll jump into the blurbs next. <laughs> All right, so we've got a new segment. This is the blurbs. So whenever we don't have three major stories, and we may even toss this in even when we do have three major stories if there's enough stuff to just rapid fire through. we got a lot of small things that aren't 
really good enough to be their own segment. But yeah, it's it's not big enough to uh, things that are noticeable. Yeah, noticeable. That's that's a good word for it, right? It's just stuff yeah. that like you just read off, and it just is what it is. Uh, first off, the SEC media day has opened up Monday, which means it is officially talking season. Biggest news actually broke last Friday. Paul Feinbaum signed his contract with ESPN, so he is at Media Days. Uh, I watched him most of today. Uh, on next week's show, we're going to do our SEC previews. And I've got something about this later on. It's something that came out that was interesting, but we'll we'll get into that later. So SEC Media Days are ongoing this week. Keep an eye out on the SEC Network. Uh, you will learn nothing new. Nothing new, but a lot it of does. Coach, a lot of coach speak. And the only thing I'm interested in, just a quick blurb on this. Okay. Are there any new characters that are going to come out? Because we have lost over time Spurrier. We've lost less. We've lost the, the, the just creme de la creme of talkers in the SEC. I watched Jimbo Fisher hoping that he would take on the Texas persona, and I was sadly disappointed. I, I mean, he's, he's a good talker. To, I don't but, know if you're ever going to get the Louisiana boy out of him. He's, he's just – I mean, I guess well, I mean, Ron is fine. kind of uh, – a, a, an interesting talker, but how much even of that he is, was boring today. How much of that is just his voice? I mean, Monday's, that's just his dialect. Monday was Orgeron. Uh, he did say something interesting. He said that hiring Matt Canada was a mistake. Like, he, and just flat out said that was a mistake, hmm. and it's a bigger mistake if you don't fix it as quickly as you realize now, it I, is. I don't disagree with the second part. I, you know me, I'm very quick to fire. I'm oh, very yeah. quick to fire. As soon well, as you know a guy's a losing hand, yeah, I'm a poker player. Yeah. You fold the hand. Yeah, you don't waste the money. You don't waste the time yeah. and all that kind of. Now they wasted money, but right. whatever. Yeah, time, time. Yeah, time. You don't waste. We the got time. money. Uh, let's move on. MLB All Star Game is Tuesday night. I don't have a lot to say about it. Your thoughts? I, lo- I, lo- I love. I love the All Star Game. It is my favorite of all the big sports All Star Games. It's not even close. Home Run Derby is tonight. We're recording this on Monday, um, and uh, got a hot take about that a little while later. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, I'm excited. I have looked at these rosters. Pitching in the NL is really good. I cannot imagine the NL coming close to winning this thing. I know it doesn't matter, but the AL lineup is just unbeatable. Did they did they switch this back to where? It, yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't mean, mean anything. anything. No, 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 it doesn't mean anything. See, that's the thing. Like, I, for I still think like I still think that play like pitchers are still going to try and get you out. Yep, hitters are still going to try and hit. Correct. Fielders are still going to try and make plays. This is all going to come back to my hot take. Your your philosophy is exactly why I think my hot take is correct. Okay. All right, next up, Louisville takes the Papa John's name off the stadium. Papa John resigned his post on the Louisville Board of Trustees and the CEO of Papa John's Pizza. Now, were you surprised that he and the pizza company allowed all this to happen so quickly? So here's – I have a little bit of a blip with this that I have just a, just a smidge of an issue, Okay. I have no issues with firing him or forcing him to resign. None whatsoever. What he says, appalling. You can't say that today's day and age. For anybody that doesn't yeah. know, he dropped he dropped, uh, an he dropped an in bomb in the middle of a PR meeting, a conference call, yeah, a like conference like call, multiple people with, with a like a publicity yeah. agency yeah. that was basically trying to curb racism. <laughs> Which is what just just you can't do, and, yeah, and so I have no dumb. idea with them disassociate disassociating themselves with him, but teams wanting to like break their sponsorship and people wanting to boycott the company. Well, and, like, and Louisville I'm players a, saying that if the name wasn't off the stadium, that they weren't going to play. I think that's, that's ridiculous. Absurd. And here's the reason why this whole company shouldn't be punished because one guy is a jackass. I agree because. I, like I, I work. It doesn't in, help that he is Papa John, and the name of the I, company is Papa John. But John's. you can't change. You can't re rebrand the whole company and name. You can rebrand the thing, taking his image off, but you can't change the whole company overnight. It's going to take yeah. time. But but I'm a guy that that I'm in a small business, and I know that most of the pizza places around are not big corporate conglomerates. They're yeah. all franchisees. Right. So there are local people in your community right now. Regardless of what you think of their quality of pizza, if you like their pizza, then still order their pizza. You're yeah. still supporting local people that work there and and have jobs, and and they aren't anything like this guy. Exactly. That's that's my take on this whole deal. I think we're going a little crazy. Let's punish the person, not the whole group. That I agree. The the name removal was a little crazy, considering that they have a contract that's already 
done up and everything through like 2036. I, I just don't understand that. I, I think you sit down and you explain to player and you let the like local Louisville fl- franchisees come in and say, hey, we – we're still here. We're still yeah, a part of your community. <laughs> we're still going to be. We're the people that have been supporting you all along. That that guy is the face of yeah. a company, but that's all he is. Yeah, it, you don't we, have to take we, our name off that's of your. Right. We are still a part of, of what's going on here in Louisville and at the University of Louisville, the city and the university. So I just want people to just, let's just chill for it. Just o- pump the brakes it's okay and everybody chill It's okay to out. get rid of somebody. Yes. I just told you, I'm quick to fire. But once you fired the man, just let let's let's now move on. Exactly. All right, we'll move on from that. Air Force coach Troy Calhoun will not reveal the name of his new defensive coordinator. At a recent event in Colorado, Coach Calhoun was asked about it. He said, "I don't know if if it's necessarily a delay. I've yet to see a law or an edict that says that you have to name him. So Calhoun either hasn't decided who's going to run his defense." Or he sees no reason to tip his hand to opponents. What, what do you think here? All right, so this goes back to a guy I defend all the time. But Harbaugh, like, not giving, like, teams his roster yeah. last year, things like that. Like, no one's making you do it. You you just kind of look weird not doing it. Yeah, it's a little strange. It's uh, like he's already got his entire staff We do hired. live in a world where, like – embracing the weird has kind of been the thing, but football has been a culture that doesn't embrace the weird. No. This is weird. Very conservative people yeah. like do it by the or do it the way it's always been, always done, been done or I don't know whatever. that I I'm not gonna say I like it, but I also don't know that I dislike it. I just think it I don't know what it tells me about him as a person. It's it's a little strange. Are you really par- I mean hanging out in Colorado, I mean, you know, he's might be Smoking the ganja. <laughs> he might be a little, a little paranoid. A little paranoid. Looking he might over be the slightly paranoid. Uh, Shady McCoy, uh, we'll move on to that one. Uh, yeah. LaShawn McCoy uh, was uh, allegedly, he was accused of beating up his ex-girlfriend yeah. slash baby mama, whatever. Or, like, he hired somebody to go in and do it. Like, she wouldn't return some of the jewelry that he gave to her when he asked for it back. He hired somebody to go in and pistol whip her or whatever if she didn't give it back. Uh, he denies any wrongdoing. He did hire the best defense attorney in uh, in Atlanta. You look, it, everybody's so burnt on these things because people make false accusations all the time. Like Reuben Foster was almost cut from the 49ers because of a domestic abuse issue. And then the girl comes out in court and says, I was just trying to ruin him. He didn't actually do this to me. This happened elsewhere. And then there was like proof of it happening elsewhere. So then Reuben Foster gets off clean, and his name was drugged through the mud, front page headlines, and then when he's cleared, it's like back page. Yeah, it doesn't make any news. So if, you, if Shady did this. He doesn't deserve to be in the NFL. He's gone. No, he's, he's, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he'll be he's out. gone. Gone, gone, gone. Um, and if he didn't, this is this is pretty ugly. Yeah, this is this bad juju. Yeah. Bad juju. Uh, video came out of a security guard attacking Pac-Man Jones in an airport. Pac-Man turned around and knocked this dude, Clint. Did you you saw the video, right? I watched the video. TMZ posted it up. The security guard lost the fight, <laughs> lost his job, and was arrested. Is this the dumbest thing that that guy could have done, especially at work? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. I mean, just picking a fight with somebody is pretty pretty ballsy at, at, at your place of business. Well, picking a fight with somebody that's known to well, be crazy. Well, that's it. I was going to say, that's he a just, former he picked, professional football he player. Picked a fight with a professional athlete. Okay, that's that's a little little more dangerous. Professional athletes that's mentally unstable. But yes. now we're getting into suicidal. Like, do you have a death wish? I mean, I, don't I mean, know obviously you got something going on because I and I, nobody knows what the fight was about. It didn't end well. But you could see from the video that he instigated. He, he started it. it. He started it, and then. Pac-Man showing up, finished it, man. He he got a nice blow in there. Uh, Fox Sports is talking to Jeff Fisher about uh, becoming a game analyst, most presumed for Thursday night football. Will Fisher be as boring in a booth as he was during interviews and press conferences? He'll probably be better in a booth than he was in press conferences. But I, His voice is so monotone, so just... He might have personality yeah, you know, that we've just that. never seen. Maybe. And, and I'm okay with that. I don't know why you go after him, though. I mean, it's got to be a look thing, right? Like, I mean, he's I a guess. Southern California boy. 
And, he's, and that's what he's, Fox goes after. He's a still a good-looking man. Like, to be older, he's got all his hair. He's got decent facial hair when he grows it kind of stuff. Like, yeah. is this an appearance thing? Because – it can't. There, there's yeah, got to be a, a list of a hundred people. Yeah, you will. If he's on Fox, a, a the, couple the of game, times. That, but it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. I I think this is an appearance thing because there are a hundred other football guys out there smarter than him, better than him, more articulate than him. Do Do you think they just needed a big name? He's not a big name. He's a big enough he's name. Known he's known for recent. going eight and eight, seven and nine. That's what he's, he's known. He's for. got the most. Lo- he's tied for the most losses by a head coach in NFL history. With 165. Because he helped his job so long. It's it's pretty insane. Oh. It's pretty insane. All right. Uh, Tim Tebow is dating Miss Universe. Demi Lee Nell Peters from South Africa. Now, first off, have you seen this girl? I have not. You haven't seen I her have yet. yet. Hold on. I'm going to pull, pull it up for you. All right. All right. So, All right, you, see, you her see her. Now. I see her now. All right. Now, do you give either of them props for not flaunting their relationship? Because apparently they've been dating for a while and, and nobody knew. I, I respect the fact that they're not doing that. You know, I, I don't know that there would ever be a point in my life where I would be okay or happy living in that kind of a public life. I could imagine that. I re, you know, I refer to my children, but I don't, like, talk about them a lot. I don't use names. Not that no, no one can not find my kids' names. I'm not, like, that public of a guy. But, like, I just don't know that I want that private like that public of a lie well you don't want people trying to take pictures of you when you go out for if Starbucks, i was if i was right? real famous i might see it differently i mean i listened to uh Penn Jillette and and kevin smith talk on a podcast a while back and and you know they they bring this up about people coming up and asking for pictures and autographs and saying hey i'm sorry i'm not bothering you and they both say if if i didn't want you to do it i wouldn't have i i do what i do so you do this like i yeah. I chose to be in show business so people would come up and ask me. And then Penn always says, and if I don't want you to do it, I can change it in less than 30 hours. Roseanne did. Like, <laughs> like I, could, I could say one crazy thing, and in less than 12 hours, nobody will ask for my autograph anymore. Or, or you just don't go out. Or you don't right? go out. But, but then you're an yeah. antisocial, and that's... Yeah, I mean, you anyway, you go out when you want people I res- to come I respect out and whatever. Tim Tebow and all the things that he has done and the way he has chosen to live his life. Um, you know, I, I don't have any. I want him to be more involved with SEC Network than I do with Major League Baseball. Do you think you finally made it when you date your second Miss Universe? Is that- <laughs> I mean, Tom's two for two with Victoria's Secret supermodels. Yeah, so no, that's true. Miss Universe, is that, is that better than a su- I think it is. It's got to be. I, it's a universe, right? Yeah, Miss Universe is, is on up there. I, I don't tough. know, Olivia Culpa or Culpo or whatever her name is, and then this Demi, uh, they, look, he ain't he ain't dating ugly girls <laughs> by any means. So, <laughs> We're All right, this. last one, Brett Bielema may never come back to college. I love this. He said, the thing I love about football in the, uh, in the NFL is you get to go to work at 6 a.m. and you leave at 9 p.m. and it's nothing but football. Nothing but football. It's just purely I, football. This is why I love the NFL more than college. He, he, hold this on. Is, he, said, this is it. he then said, it's a whole different way to coach. I understand once they go to that level, coaches don't ever go back. Yep. Your thoughts? I, I think he's exactly right, and I think the only time they don't go back is when they can't do it there. I just believe that to be true. Let me do a, a quick fact or fiction. Okay. Do you think that Bielema never coaches in college again? I think he never coaches in college again. So I think, fact. I think he is trying to get the offensive coordinator job when Belichick leaves and Josh moves into the head coaching job. I could see that. Let me tell you what I also think, being the resident Patriot fan here. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you what I also think. Okay. I'm very critical of the Patriots having zero wide receivers on on staff and nine running backs. I think Brett Bieleman makes a lot of sense as to why we have nine running backs. And you remember Probably. how Bill reinvented football when he said everybody's going after these little small wide receivers or big wide receivers, and I'm just going to have two tight ends, and I'm going to run a two tight end set and change the game? Yeah. Okay. I think he's going to change the game because I think he's going to run out there with four uh, four running backs. I that think would be I think insane. we're going to run sets with four running backs. I think that's going to happen, and I think he's going to change. I don't know if it's going to be successful, 
but it's going to change the way football works for a little while. That could be interesting. Bill never does the same thing too long, ever. Now, you're right about ever. that. And he might think that he's gone a little too long with the uh, – The little wide receivers and the big tight end. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's change it up. Because right now we've got Edelman. We've got – Gronk. Dorsett as a wide receiver that we traded for is useless. We've got Malcolm Mitchell that has never played three games in a row. And I can't name another wide receiver on the roster. That's pretty insane. Yeah, I mean it's it's crazy. You can run whatever kind of sets and you want, and then we've got Gronk and nine running backs. <laughs> I would say this in fantasy football: don't draft any of those running backs. No, I wouldn't. It, it'll Belichick be it'll be Alabama. Your guts. Right? He hates your guts. Where where you at Alabama? He, it's like running back by committee. Yeah. you got four or five guys that are going to touch the well, field. Alabama, all, all you've time. got three all the time. This this is a whole different game, man. Yeah, this is. It, what y'all got going on is nuts. So right, I'm pretty excited that Bill, uh, Bielman's our, our running back guy. If we're going to have a lot of running backs, he's my guy. Well, and he doesn't have a an official title yet, no, he's, but he just, will. No, he will. He will. <laughs> All right, we're going to move to another new segment. All right, so we have a new segment. Every week we will be doing a thing called the ranking. We're going to do top ten of whatever it is that we decide to list that week. This week, Super Nintendo games. Now, you and I grew up in the Nintendo, Sega, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64 generation. We had all of the old 8-bit, 16-bit games. Super Nintendo was awesome right when it first came out. It was everybody sat at home and played it. We loved it. We'll go on and, and not take too much of your time, but the way that we do this ranking is we do it in a draft format. So we each have 10 that we like, and when our time comes up, then we will give our ranking. We will draft one of our games. So do you want to go first on this one, or would you rather me start this one out and then the I'll next let, one? I'll let you go first. I'll let okay, you go first. and next week you're going to come up with a topic, and, and, and first. you will go first. Perfect. All right, so this week... The ranking is Super Nintendo games, the best top 10 Super Nintendo games. My number one is Super Mario Kart. I love Mario Kart. Look, everybody played it. You could play four people at a time. Um, it really, you could only do you could only do two on the Super Nintendo, couldn't you? I don't was remember. It? I think you play four. Yeah, you could play four at a time on no, that. You play four. Either way, it, look, my brother and I would play all the time. We we would do tournaments, right? So my little brother and our neighbors and whatnot, and people would come over, and I'm talking, that's the first game that I really remember getting so pissed off that I would throw, the, I, I damaged more remote controls, and I got in more trouble from my parents because they had to go out and buy new remotes. Because I, you, you remember how the Nintendo controller yep. was? And you could get a good grip on that thing and just fling it. And it would yank the controller out because, of course, it was still wired back then. It was fantastic. So Super Mario Kart was my favorite one. The first true party game. Yes. Out of all the video games, that yes. was the first one. I agree. So have it on my list. Uh, my, my number one favorite game that I remember ever playing growing up was NBA Jams. The original NBA Jams. NBA Jam. And right. I... Uh, I remember that I was able to unlock, you know, special characters because it was two on two, and uh, my favorite characters to play with all the time was Beavis and Butthead. Once I unlocked <laughs> them, and then I remember uh, being able to get Bill Clinton and Al Gore unlocked. Yeah, and I played with them a lot. So that's pretty funny. I thought it was hilarious back then. Think it would be awesome now. Number three for me, Donkey Kong Country. Okay, I love Donkey Kong Country. Uh, it was the first like real kind of 3D looking game, and I don't know what it was. It was it was an RPG, kind of like Super Mario World or Super Mario Brothers one, two, three, whatever. Yeah. Um, but man, like some levels were pretty hard to to get through and whatnot. It was uh, it was awesome. I like that game. So Donkey Kong Country is number three. My next game would be Street Fighter Two Turbo. This now I I grew up loving loving Street Fighter. There were two sects of people in like the video game fighting world back then, and it was you were either a Street Fighter guy or a Mortal Kombat guy with the friends that I hung out with. 
And I remember <laughs> always just really liking Street Fighter much better. At, I, now I had the, Street Fighter on the, on my list as well. I that's, thought that's I thought a good the one. characters were better. I thought th- they looked cooler. You didn't have the blood and the gore like Mortal Kombat, but um, I really liked it a lot. So you had him as well. Who was your favorite fighter to fight with? You know, I don't even remember the uh, the names of the guys. I remember the the big, gigantic uh, Japanese guy. I used that to fight guy with him. With the hunter hand slap. Yeah, yeah. So my my favorite was uh, was uh, uh, Blanco. Oh the, yeah, the yeah, okay. Dude. The big green yeah. like monster. Yeah. yeah, that dude was awesome. So he so. was he was cool. I used to fight with a sumo wrestler guy all the yeah. time. Uh, it, I don't really have a reason. Yeah, I don't know. He just looked cool, like that hunter hand slap where he's just. Oh, <laughs> you get you get him in a corner. It's over. <laughs> Get them in a the corner, ball game. Yep, because they, they can't stop it. Like you can't ever. So yeah, we uh, we we fought a lot over that one too, because when you play people that don't know how to play and they figure out one move and it's one move that you can't stop, like and and of course you're going, like, I know I'm better than this person, like I know yeah. I am, but obviously you're not if you can't stop that crap. Uh, number six for me, or no, no number five, yeah. uh, and we'll do a recap after this. Uh, King Griffey Junior Baseball. First game that I remember, they really had a uh, a home run derby in, mm-hmm. and the random generated players that they had in this were hilarious. Like I loved these things, but man, we would sit and play home run derby on this thing for ever. It was great, and and look, there are so many games now that like played off of that, you know? Correct. And so the the format that they started that game with. Still holds up today. It is fantastic. Uh, I love it. And we grew up in a day where if you love baseball, King Griffey Jr. was, if he wasn't your your favorite player, he was, I mean, he was Michael Jordan for basketball. Like, he, maybe not the greatest of all time level, but like popular wise. Oh, yeah. That 1989 uh, uh, upper deck rookie rookie card. card. We all have it. Yep. Everybody everybody thought that it was going to be worth like, Gazillions of Hundreds dollars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Do we didn't one realize day. the fact that they made a gazillion of them and yeah. we all had it. Exactly. Uh, no. Great, great game. Great game. Um Contra two was my uh, a game that I played all the time. That was my RPG game where you just Contra two. And we played it. It was me and my brother or me and a cousin or whatever. We always played two player. I never played it one player in my life. Um and it was just a lot of fun. I okay. I'm with that. I'm with that. I played that a few times. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't one of my favorite, but I could see where it would be yeah. other people's. Uh, a lot of aliens was that was your jam, that was, right? That was what I liked. All right, number seven for me, Mortal Kombat. All right, here, let's let's read off the list so far. Number one, Super Mario Kart. Number two, NBA Jam. Number three, Donkey Kong Country. Number four, Street Fighter Two Turbo. Number five, King Griffey Junior Baseball. Number six was Contra Two. Number seven for me, Mortal Kombat. The original Mortal Kombat, my parents hated this game. Yep. Could not stand... Well, I say parents. My dad thought it was hilarious. My mother, however... My mother was the one that wouldn't let me watch Beavis and Butthead, didn't want me to watch South Park, all that's, that. That's, and, a, that's and, a good mom move. Yeah. Nothing wrong and, of with course, that. dad was... Eh, just don't tell your mom. That's right. right? That's so, right. But, man, we played the crap out of Mortal Kombat. I, I feel like I actually wore that game out. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like we might have had to buy a, a second copy. I think I remember that correctly. But either way, yeah, we wore it out, man. It was a really, really good game. That's I, I used to play with Liu Kang. I used to play with, uh, with what's the guy's name, Raiden? Yeah, I was Sub-Zero guy. Okay. That was, that was my guy. That's I See, everybody else was Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Yeah, same dude. So I I wanted to go size. separate yep. from that. But I did it, like it, Raven, though. He was the dude that threw the hat. Yeah. yeah oh, no, Raiden. Right Raiden. Raiden, yeah, Raiden. he's the – you got it. Yeah, he was awesome. I loved Raiden. So my next – Game that I liked, Mega Man X. Mega Man X. I really liked the Mega Man games. Um, I, I Another just, similar to Super Mario. And, yeah, and I just I stuff. just found them enjoyable. I can understand that. Uh, let's see, number nine for me. Man, I got a I got several here. Look, WWF Royal Rumble. I was just about to say, if you don't say it, I will. Yeah, Royal Rumble was fantastic. I mean, that was just. It, look, that was back in the days of Macho Man and the Ultimate Warrior and Big Boss Man, Hulk Hogan, yeah. you know, you name it. And, I mean, I played 
I played that game so much. The glory days of wrestling. Yes, it was. That I mean, it was still WWF back then. That's right. Before they got sued <laughs> <laughs> by a bunch of animals. There you go. And then my last one. It wouldn't be a, an appropriate Nintendo list without the Legend of Zelda. I think you might so. be right. I think you might be right. What uh? All right, tell me about Legend of Zelda. I didn't play that one a whole lot, mm-hmm. but like, what was? What was it about that game that really drew you to it? Um, I, just the storyline? Yeah, just the storyline. I mean, it, it actually told... It was an RPG, but it, it told more of a story than Mario did, or even than Mega Man or... Um, you so know, you, you can tell Contra. by my games, like, yeah. mine was all competition, right? Super Mario Kart, this was, this was King Griffey, like Mortal Kombat. Quest. Yeah, this was, this is definitely more a, a game of quest and, 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 you know... You could play it by yourself and be out. fine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's do a, a couple of honorable mentions here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles yeah, in Time. No. That, that was the arcade one. Everybody played that one. Yep. Super Mario World, I got. Um, well, I think we, we both, neither one of us, like, mentioned any of the Mario ones other than the, the Mario, Kart. Mario Kart. Mario Kart has to be on this list and yeah. at the top of it. But but the, the other Mario ones, I mean, they're just, there were so many. It was almost like you kind of just don't get to make the list. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, and then Earthworm Jim, I tossed that one out there. So, did you have any others? No, nope, that's it. Nope, that's it. Wonderful. All right, that wraps up that one. We're going to jump into another segment after this. It is time for the song of the week. This week, we got Jason Isbell in the 400. song is Hope the High Road from 2017's Nashville Sound Record. It was done with the Nashville producer Dave Cobb. Isbell is the former singer for Southern Rock Band Drive-By Truckers. He's uh, had a resurgence in the past five years or so. Isbell was in and out of rehab for years. Uh, And he he was, you know, out of shape, not doing well. He got sober, wrote the best record he's ever written in 2013 with uh, Southeastern. And this was the uh, the first record that he's done with his band, the 400 Unit, since he's been clean. That song is my favorite from the record. It's upbeat, catchy, and as the title dictates, uh, kind of provides a little hope in a sometimes non-hope-providing world. Uh, it's fantastically written. You need to give it a listen on our playlist over at winningcureseverything.com. That moves us into Hot Takes of the Week. Now, we had a little trouble this week coming up with Hot Takes. Um, just not a lot going on. And you've kind of been on my up. hot takes here lately. Well, hey, I mean, you know, I I, you, I, I don't mean to. I apologize. You, you've been for on that. my hot takes, it was... telling me that they're not hot takes. Well, I, I, the last <laughs> weeks, I think more people actually agree with you than not, which makes it probably not a hot take if you're doing a comparison between one and another. I think you might be right. Now, I think there is a level of hot take where you're not comparing anything; you just have an opinion, and it's strong. That makes sense. And I think that's okay. But if you're going to compare two people, if all the numbers say your your way is the conventional way of thinking, that can't be the hot take. Everybody that disagrees with you is just wrong. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. And look, this week might be the same thing. Okay. All right. The Big 12 has a new conference slogan. Their slogan is the hardest path to the college football playoff. They debuted it today, Monday, at their media days. My hot take is this is going to backfire or prove them right, either one, uh, and they're not going to have a team even sniff the college football playoff. What do you think the thinking was behind this? You got me. I don't know. Like, I understand where they're coming from because, like, they're the only conference where you got to play 10 conference games, right? Or you got to play you got to play everybody in your conference. You play nine conference games. And then you got to play somebody twice. Yeah. So I can understand where they're coming from. Because in the Big Ten, you play ten conference games if you play a, a Big Ten but championship game. But, like, five game. of your teams are garbage. Yeah. So, yeah, you got to play them all, but... 
Playing them all is not too bad. Like it's it's not that big. I of mean, a deal. having Kansas on your on your schedule every year is not that big of a deal. Well, it's kind of like SEC East, right? Where yeah. it's like, well, we could play Vanderbilt every year. Every like, year, all right, cool. Yeah. Like, and sometimes Vandy's all right. Missouri but, most years. Yeah, Missouri, yeah. and and see, we're still trying to figure out what Missouri is this no, year. We're but not. but in the Big Twelve, no, we're not. The hardest path to the college football playoff is their new slogan. They might have debuted it this year because they know they ain't got a chance at the playoff. That's a bold statement. You don't think Oklahoma's going to be good this year? I don't think they're going to be very good this year. Okay. I think Baker Mayfield was a generational talent. I hope you're right about that being the Browns guy. but I, I, I really do. Okay. I really think that he was, like, he was that team. And look, Alabama in 1999 won an SEC championship game. Okay. Returned. 18 starters, including starting quarterback, etc., went three and eight the next year. Like when you lose a guy, like Alabama lost Sean Alexander. When you lose one guy that is like the leader of the team, I just I don't know that I trust Lincoln Riley enough to to. Be, and I I don't think that Oklahoma is going to be bad. That's right. I could just see him going ten and two. Yeah, I mean if they lose you know? two games, it's over. I, I think even if they lose one game, they might be out. It all depends on, you know, what everybody else does, obviously. Like, if, if Washington loses to Auburn the first week, then yeah. Pac-12 might be might be shot. But you could still end up with two SEC teams and Clemson and Ohio State or whoever, yeah. right? So, you, you never know on these things. But that's my hot take. The Big 12 won't even sniff the playoff this year. Mine is not football-related. Um, that's all right. This week it is more <laughs> baseball-related, but not – just against baseball. We're going to talk about the home run derby, but right. but f- f- pretend that I could also be talking about the slam dunk contest or any other real skills position that you've got. Okay. I believe that all these players work for big corporations called Major League Baseball or the NFL or the NBA. They are their employers. Yeah. Or they are their, the employees of these companies. Not just the teams, but the whole group. Okay. I think they should be forced to do the skills competitions if requested by the leagues. I don't like the idea that you are perfectly healthy. There is nothing wrong with you. You are not on any type of injury report whatsoever. And you just don't want to, quote, unquote, mess up your swing. Or I have nothing to prove by going to the dunk contest, so I'm not going to do it. I think you're the employee of this group. I also think there should be language in there where they can't ask you to do it every year. I understand that. Agreed. But you're talking about major markets with major quality assets, and none of them are involved. You have two potentials from Boston and New York. Well, tell me, get, read both. me, read me the list right quick of of who's in the home run right. derby. You you you've got you've got, and I'm going to butcher some of these names because I don't know them very well. And, and, <laughs> and that's all these part guys, of the problem. All these guys have well over 20 home runs. A lot of these guys are young talent, and if you follow baseball very closely, these guys are all stars. These but guys, the all star game is not for all star fans. This, this is, is a promotional you're tool trying to get the yes. casual guy in. And if you're going to do it with the home run derby, you got to do it with names people recognize. So you've got Jesus. Uh, are, how would you pronounce that? Aguilar. Aguilar. I should probably know this because I actually <laughs> watched several Brewers games, but I just don't. Bryce Harper, big name. Max Murchie, um, Alex Burtman. There is no bigger fan on the on the planet right now of Alex Burtman than me. I I talk about him on Twitter. I talk about him on Facebook. I I, I retweet and share every video <laughs> of this guy. He's an LSU guy. Plays for the Astros. Super exciting. He but young guy. does not – it's his second year in the league. Yeah. He doesn't belong in here over a Mookie Betts or a J.D. Martinez. He, he just doesn't. He just doesn't. Javier Baez and Kyle Schwarber. You got two guys from the Cubs. Come on now. That's a that's a little crazy. I do think both of them deserve to be here. But And then Freddie Freeman. I think Freddie Freeman is great. Being yeah. from the South, we know him. I don't know that he's a national name. I just he's don't. Not. And, and, and then uh, and then Hoskins from from Philly, so it's just something that I don't. I think they should make these guys do it. 
back to my original point. You've got two guys from Boston that are qualified in Martinez and Mookie. Neither one of them are going. One of them needs to be there. You've got Jose Ramirez, who is an absolute monster right now, and Francisco Lindor from Cleveland. Neither one of them are represented or being there. Mike Trout, everybody on the planet says he's the best player in baseball and he's stuck in this Siberia land of Anaheim because they're not good, their games aren't on TV, and nobody ever gets to see him. No, we're going to see Mike, and Mike doesn't have a say in it. Your team's not in the playoff race. Your team is is, is kind of dogging it. We're going to let you put on a show tonight, and you don't have a choice. You yeah. don't get to say no. Unless you're hurt, you don't get to say no. I know that Judge and Stanton did it last year. Sorry, Stanton joined your team. We can't have the Red Sox and the Yankees being the dominant story for Major League Baseball and no one represent it from their team in the home run derby contest when they've got four monster guys that can be there. This is a well, it's problem. Four, four of the most well-known players That's in it. the league. That's it. You you have and, – and Bryce Harper tried to not do it, but – they're hosting it with being from the Nationals, being <laughs> you Washington. Kinda, you he kind of have to. He couldn't get out of it. He's that a, would be awful. He's in a monster slump right now, <laughs> and he doesn't want to do it, and he probably doesn't deserve it other than name recognition. But because he's, of how he's bad from he's there. Hitting. He's probably the most famous player in the league. Yeah, no, he's 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 the quote unquote face of baseball. If I had to say yeah, so, yeah. And I if would it's in your town, you got to be. No, in, you got no period. choice. And and here's what's sad. He's teaming up with Freddie Freeman, probably one of the the third or fourth other biggest name guy in round one in the brackets, which means one of these guys is going to get sent home immediately. Yeah. I just think the dunk contest, LeBron's never done it. You know, Durant said, get the big name guys out there. And here's the deal. Make a deal with them. We won't ask all you guys to do it the same year. We're going to ask you to do it once. We'll never ask you again after your career, after the one time you do it. But next year, you pick two superstars and you say, you two guys are in it. Like, this is your year. This is your year. You know well enough in advance. Start working on stuff. We're going to give you an opportunity to display your talents, but you work for us. Unless you're on on an injury report, you're you're in this I wouldn't say one. I would would say, like, at least three, right? Because, like, once you've made a big enough name. Yeah, you can get on all that. You're going to have to. But but you understand the concept of what I'm saying. Unless you can show us where you're, you're not hurt. Yeah. Then, then, then you're doing this. Well, I mean, it's uh, the names in the NBA back then. I mean, you remember the home run derbies that we used to watch? I know they were all superstars. The lot of them. There was well, not an Alex it was, Berkman it was fun. out there. Yeah, you were going out there to have fun. And I it think didn't Berkman matter. could be the best defensive third baseman I've ever watched in my life. Do you think that some of this might have? And I know we're going long on this, but no. I, it it, it kind of drives me insane that there is. No off time before the All Star game. No, they they definitely went from played yesterday, home run derby today, uh, game tomorrow. But after the game tomorrow, there's like three days off. And there's the rest is, of the week off, which is fine. You got three days off after. But you don't need an off day before you go do a home run. It's it's just batting practice. You're not playing a game. Why why would they not do the All Star game on like a Saturday night? You don't need to. You just you just do it in the you do it during the middle. It's always been. I don't know. I don't. But I don't know that that would change anything. I, I think the well, that's what I'm saying is like you it. you're off on say say your last game is on Wednesday of last week. You got All Star Weekend like you have with the NBA and NFL and whatever, and then you go back to playing again on like to, Wednesday to be or Thursday. Honest, to be honest, I think the ratings on Saturday and Sunday for their nationally televised games are really good, and so I think they don't want to take away a Saturday. I that guess that kind of makes sense. Because their ratings for Mondays and Tuesdays are garbage. That kind of makes sense. And this week, they're going to be monsters. So you get to do it in the middle of the week. Um, but I just I just don't understand. Like, I guess in basketball, you could say you could hurt yourself. You can hurt yourself doing anything, man. Like, you're if you're just going to live in a bubble and not perform, you're in – at the end of the day, this is all show business. That's all it is. Well, it's these these guys are going to. They're playing in the All Star game. That's right. So, that's right. What's the problem with going out and hitting BP for a little while? And and here's the deal: there's no rule to say you can't go out there and tank it. But that would be a decision between you and your agent and your fan base and your endorsers. Yeah, and and your yeah your sponsors to see is that something you want to do or not. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, we're going to move into the last segment of the week. It's back to fixing. 
this week's fact or fiction. It is the last segment of the week. The most interesting thing that popped out of Greg Sankey's opening statements at SEC Media Days Monday morning was that Media Days will be headed back to Hoover, Alabama in 2019, and then the options are open for 2020. Now, we'll get into what I think after this. I'm going to ask your opinion. Uh, Fact or fiction? SEC Media Days should be at the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta every year. I'm going to I'm going to say fiction because because it's in Atlanta doesn't give the SEC exclusive rights for being able to be there. It is the College Football Hall of Fame, not the SEC Hall of Fame. Yeah, so why why would the ACC not be allowed to do it, which they're actual they have a school that's based out of Atlanta that could be there. So, um and then, and then it's just it's the Hall of Fame should be. I believe that Hall of Fame should be for everybody. Do you think Atlanta is the biggest city in the South? Oh yeah, it's it's without question the biggest city in the South. Well, that that's why I think. Okay, even if it's not at the College Football Hall of Fame every year, I think it should be in Atlanta every year. So I like not the Bur- idea. Not Birmingham, not Hoover. No, but I don't like Hoover either. Let me tell you what I think they should do. Okay. Okay. Now, me and you are ideal guys. All right. <laughs> I think they should rotate it around and and let the schools host it. Let the schools host it. Let the cities in the schools host it. You've got 14 cities across the SEC. Let them host it every year. And every 14 years, it will be at your campus. That's interesting. I like that idea. I think that's a good idea. I That was my idea. That's why I like it. I'm not against that. I think I would move it from... Like big cities, right? So in Missouri, St. Louis. I mean, they just had the uh, basketball tournament there. It's St. Louis, Houston, uh, Birmingham, Atlanta, Memphis, Nashville. I just, I, I, I mean, think where college, do you go in? College basketball is a small town thing anyway. I guess the downside yeah. of doing media day from there is. Uh, I mean, the hotels will be cheap because nobody's in in school, nobody's on campus at that point in time. That's a good point. So the media people, it'll it'll help their budgets a little bit. Um, I don't know. I think fans will show up. I think if you were to do it in Oxford, even though there's nothing going on in Oxford right now, I think Ole Miss people would show up. Well, and see, that's support. the thing. Like you, you like, don't I have think, to worry about fans necessarily showing up. Like it. There's not a ton of fans that media, are out. Media is going to show up. The media is going to show up no matter where it is because they, they have to. Their job is to cover the SEC. They have no choice. Yeah, I mean, there's there's like a thousand credentialed media members. Yeah. every no. year now. I, I I like the idea of doing it either on cam. I, I mean, I'd put it on campus. I would have it on campus somewhere. ESPN or the SEC network is going to be there. That's a big deal. All of them have the facilities to host it and to do it because it's not that big. Um, and and I think it would be something to where you're not showing favoritism. I think having, to, having it in Hoover, Alabama is really tough for everybody in the SEC that already feels like Alabama gets everything they want. They also get to basically host Media, media Day. They control the media already is the feeling from everybody that's non-Alabama SEC fan as it is. That doesn't help the SEC look stronger at all. I think the the media got used to it being at the Winfrey in in Hoover. Uh, there's a lot of people that are not happy about it being in Atlanta this year. I mean, it's nice to go once, but nobody. But, listen, that's ridiculous, though. Anybody that says they would rather be in Hoover than Atlanta is an idiot. No, no, no. As far as as far as setup, I think, like, because I don't know what the setup is once, for once Radio it, Row. Like, people that are wanting to host the radio shows live from there. And but wouldn't it be center. awesome if you could host – if you do an SEC radio show, wouldn't it be better to host it from a campus? Wouldn't you rather host it from the Grove or wouldn't you re- all week? Or wouldn't you rather host it from tailgate and areas of Mississippi State or in Baton Rouge or, you know, Athens between the – head? I mean, wouldn't you rather do that? Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on weather. I mean, my God, it's oh, 100 they, these degrees. Guys, <laughs> no, these guys all have air-conditioned tents and whatever. Or they can host it from indoors somewhere. Yeah, I mean, they, they'd have to I find mean, out a lot. I think the setup is the biggest There's uh, a, the biggest there's a million empty buildings right now on every college campus this week. Where they could set up all I sorts mean, of I mean, every stuff. college campus is nothing going on. Summer and school. Everybody, everybody's got a broadcasting school. Yeah, they've got access to the technology. This is not that complicated of technology. We have that technology here in your living room. That's a good point. 
this is not this is not that complicated so i don't like the idea of just saying we get atlanta because if i'm the if i'm the acc i'd be like hey i I got a little bit of problem with that we actually have (laughs) a school we've got a school in in atlanta (laughs) in atlanta why do y'all get claim to it um and then, and then if I'm well, there's the big, no reason why they couldn't no. do it too, because it, I think well, that, but uh, everybody can't do the media. Like I know that all the media ACC, days aren't the same time. Yeah, the but, ACC is next week, but all of them aren't spread out over the next six weeks. Like they're at some That's point true. in time. And, and here's the thing: if it is college Hall of Fame, then even your small schools should be able to go there and and do it because it is college football Hall of Fame, not big boy college football Hall of Fame. Ah, oh, you got a point. And, and I just believe that Hall of Fames should be should be untouchable to to sponsorships. To nobody should be able to buy their way into it. I think you're probably I right. I think I think if if yeah, I th- I think that those are just I don't know the real wording that I'm trying to look at for that, but you know what I'm saying. I. I feel you. Yeah. Hopefully <laughs> everybody you. else does. Never been a man of words before. That's an outlaw. All right. Quick. Well, that's that's going to wrap it up for this week. Um, go to the website, winningcureseverything.com. Next week, we will be doing our SEC preview. We're going to talk about all uh, 14 SEC teams. We'll give you all of our picks and whatnot. We'll go into a little bit of detail. We'll try and fit it all into an hour and whatnot. Uh, and we'll try and fit in some actual news next week if there is anything. Which it's still summer, by God. There's just not much going on, but but it is preview season. It is time for us to get ready for college football. We are pumped. We are ready. Go to the website winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube, YouTube.com/slash winningcureseverything. Uh, download the podcast and subscribe to it. Review it if you would. Five stars. Give us a written review. Help us out. iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play. Um, Follow us on Twitter at Winning Cures. You can follow me at Gary WCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. And you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything. That will do it for this week. We will see you guys next week. Better. It's time for the rundown. Remember, check out winningcureseverything.com. You can give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. You can follow us on Twitter at Winning Cures. You can follow myself at Gary WCE. You follow me at Chris B. Giannini, C H R I S B G I A N N I N I. You can also email the show that's Winning Cures Everything at gmail.com. And we now have a voicemail line. That number is 551 226 9899. If you want to call and bash us for talking bad about your favorite team or praise us, or just tell us about how awesome your team is doing, leave us a voicemail. That number again is 551-226-9899, and we may toss it on the show. Thank you for supporting this show, and until next time, have a good one, guys. Hey, don't forget, subscribe to the Winning Cures Everything podcast on iTunes, and make sure you leave a review. For every 25 written five-star reviews we get on iTunes, we are donating to St. Jude's Children's Hospital and Le Bonheur's Children's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. So subscribe and review on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all your favorite podcast apps. Remember, the Winning Cures Everything podcast.